What's going on guys, it's Jay. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I typically post content around my modified Audi S3 AV. And I'm actually trying to hit a thousand subscribers right now. So if you land on this video and you enjoy the content, please hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a lot. But for today's video, I just wanted to take a quick drive and talk about something that is probably familiar to many car enthusiasts that are watching this content. And that is the topic of buyer's remorse. So if you've seen any of my videos, you probably know by now that I do not hate this car. I actually love this car. I've had it for two years now and I have really zero complaints about it. Now, that doesn't mean there is not a little remorse uh, going through my mind. And I just wanted to talk about that and kind of explain how I got into this car and what my future plans are as of right now. So if we rewind two years back to when I bought this car, I was actually driving a 2019 SS1 Elite Camaro. So that's the sixth gen. It is a naturally aspirated V8 and it was making 455 horsepower and 455 foot pound torque. So it is kind of a weird transition to go from a big V8 engine, a two door, you know, kind of race car into this more smaller compact sedan and, uh, and it being a four, four cylinder uh, as well. So back when I was driving that car, I absolutely loved it. It was manual back in 2019. They only made that car in a manual. I believe the 1LE does come in a uh, 10 speed automatic now. But I love the car. I love the sound. Like I love the driving experience, but I was driving the car all year round and here in Canada where I live, we get pretty harsh winters. So that combined with the fact that it was a big giant V8 gas guzzler, um, the doors were super long. So just like parking anywhere, you had to be super careful. It wasn't really the most practical daily driver and I was daily driving the car. I was driving it every chance I could, including in the winter, I was driving it literally every chance I got. So I've always, I've always enjoyed smaller cars. Before the Camaro, I had a 2019 um, Toyota 86. And before that, I had a 2013 Subaru BRZ, which is the same car for anybody who's familiar with that platform. So I ended up, um, you know, when I had the Camaro, started thinking that I did want a more practical daily driver, but I wanted something that was gonna be tunable. I wanted something that wasn't gonna be crazy to maintain in terms of cost. Um, the Camaro, while it wasn't crazy, I did only have it for a year and a half, but because of that one Elite package, it did have Corvette brakes on the front. Oil changes were like at the dealer around $300 Canadian. Um, obviously you can get it done cheaper at like independent shops or doing it yourself. But just even the tires, the brakes, everything was like a lot more expensive um, because it was a performance car. And I wanted something that I could kind of daily drive, have a lot of fun with, tune and modify, and uh, not have it really break the bank a whole lot. So I bought the car two years ago after watching basically every S3 video on YouTube. Um, and that's typically how my car purchasing journeys go. I kind of go down these YouTube rabbit holes for weeks or months at a time. And, you know, by the time I'm like 50 videos deep, there's probably no saving me at that point. Um, it's probably already a done deal. And it's just a matter of like, you know, holding off as long as I can. But essentially I decided to buy this car and I was really excited actually. And I, to this day, every time I get in this car, um, it puts a smile on my face. Like I, I do really, really love this car. So I bought the car essentially at the peak of the COVID market. So I drove the Camaro for a year and a half and I was able to get what I paid for it on trade-in, which is really unheard of um, most of the time when it comes to cars. So I was really happy with that value. And because I bought it at the peak of the COVID market, this car was really basically overpriced. Um, not really at that time, but uh, in comparison to right now, you know, it's it was like super, super expensive. So I purchased this car in 2022. It is a 2020 and it only had around 18 or 19,000 kilometers on it when I bought it. And so it was a lower kilometer or lower mileage car. 
Um, it was certified pre-owned from Audi, so that is increasing the price. It still had a bunch of warranty on it. It actually still has a warranty until next year, but because of my modifications, that warranty is like basically null and void. But I was really happy. And when I was looking at, you know, selling the Camaro, and I was going down the, the, the rabbit hole of what car I may want to purchase, I was really interested in buying a BMW M240i, and I was, at the time I was looking at 2019, 2020s, and I did a lot of research. The car like checked all the boxes for me. I was probably gonna get it in the X-Drive because I wanted something that was gonna be nice for the winter. They're really tunable, obviously, um, with the B58 engine. But the thing that held me back, um, funny enough, was I knew if I got the M240i, at some point, in the future, maybe not so distant future, I was going to regret not getting an M2. And the M2 is one of kind of my realistic dream cars, but at the time they were just too expensive and I really couldn't justify the extra cost. And, you know, they, the, the OG M2, you know, before the, the, the more recent gen of the competition, they, they were not as tunable. So, you know, that, that also kind of factored in, but I just didn't want to spend that extra money, right? So I end up, you know, looking into the S3, finding out that it's basically a Golf R. The parts are way easier to come by if anything breaks. Obviously, they're not as expensive. And it just really seemed to, to check all the boxes for me. Now, at that time, I was really interested in the RS3. And I, to this day, I, you know, and this is where the buyer's remorse comes in. So I ended up going with the S3 because the RS3s at that time were really expensive. But back when I sold my Camaro, this is two years ago, I got basically what I paid for on trade-in after driving it for a year and a half. So that was amazing, I was really happy. If I had held on to that Camaro, and even with the additional mileage, if I were to be daily driving it, and I had it today, instead of having this S3, I would be able to trade that car in. and this isn't even selling privately, this is like trading the car in at a dealer. I would have been able to get more than I had paid for it like three and a half years ago now. And I would have been able to trade it for an RS3, not even like a higher mileage, like a, you know, relatively, um, not low, but like a decently mild RS3 8V, of course. And I would have had money left over. So that's kind of where the remorse comes in. Um, right now, even though this car is amazing and it really is, in my opinion, one of the best daily drivers, especially for the money, like right now in 2024, you can get an 8V S3 facelift. So that's, I believe, 2016 or 2017 uh, and up to 2021, I think, before the 8Y came out. You can get like a lower mileage um, S3 AV facelift for like under 30,000 Canadian dollars, which is really, really crazy. Like if you can find one that has its service done and it's taken care of, that's an amazing, amazing uh, deal for a car, for a performance car. But the RS3 has just been like, over the last two years, I just keep thinking about it more and more. And I'm really a sound guy and you know, the Camaro, that car was, uh, it sounded amazing. Like that, that V8 and with the exhaust that they put on it, it was basically perfect. And I didn't think I even needed to do anything to that car in terms of modifications, but that five cylinder on the RS3, especially the 8V. Um, and I saw there's a guy I follow on YouTube named New, New England Pete. Uh, you should check his channel out because he recently, he had a Golf R and he recently purchased an 8V RS3 and he got the integrated engineering cat back on it, or I guess it would be a uh, turbo back. I'm not really sure. Um, but man, that car sounds insane. And you know, as much as I've grown to have really enjoyed the sound of this car, there's just like, there's nothing that really quite does it like the sound of an amazing sounding engine and exhaust. And that five cylinder for me is like, it's up there, you know, it's up there for like the top probably five exhaust sounds um, for me personally. And just knowing that if I had held on to that Camaro for two years, and two years is a long time, of course, um, a lot can change in two years, obviously. But just knowing that if I held on to that thing for two years, I could have been driving an RS3 right now. 
that kind of makes me a little sad. But obviously, you know, you can't think that way in life. Hindsight is 20, 20. Um, I realistically, I don't actually have any remorse. It's more so just like, you know, I, I think I'm kind. Of, I think I'm kind of in the process of convincing myself to get an RS3, and I'm actually like in terms of this S3, my S3 right now. There are other modifications that I want to do, but I'm probably going to hold off until next summer, um, just because I think there's a chance that I'm going to end up buying an RS3, especially with interest rates coming down uh, here in Canada. I think there's like a decent chance that I'm going to end up buying an RS3. So I don't, I don't want to continue modifying this car, especially if there's a chance I have to like start pulling some of those mods off to get a better trading value. But yeah, that's, that's this video guys. Um, you know, I'd like to know your experiences or thoughts on the subject. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's gone through this and especially with performance cars, you know, I know the M240, and the M2 is like a really popular one, you know, even in the Reddit threads that I have that I found myself in when I was researching the M240, people were saying, listen, don't buy the M240. It's an amazing car, but you're going to regret not getting an M2. And I don't regret buying this car by any stretch of the imagination. I don't regret it, but I do really, really want an RS3. So maybe this video is me just putting that into the universe and hopefully the universe will like bring me an RS3 at some point in, in the future. But uh, yeah, that's it guys. Um, there's more content on the way. I am planning on kind of expanding the content a bit. I made a poll. I might start posting a little more, um, you know, stuff around fitness or personal growth, but obviously the car content is not going to stop because that is my, one of my main passions. So. Thanks for watching guys. Again, if you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button. If you made it this far, uh, I really appreciate you. Uh, most people don't make it this far. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.